in the last lecture i was discussing about the multifunctional epoxy resin as a matrix resin for composites i discussed about the combination of epoxy and phenolic from the phenolic resin from the suitability point of view here the uh, novolac grade novolac grade resin was used for novolac grade phenolic resin was used with epoxy now this combination gives a very good Uh, curing characteristics, curing properties, cross link density leading to stronger composites. Now, this Novolac resin, phenol formulated resin that uh, gives a thermal stability, heat resistance, etcetera. And this epoxy gives contributes to toughness. So, toughness, strength, thermal stability, these properties are combined in a composite made from the oxy resin and phenol formulated resin in the form of nobulac. Now, there can be other multifunctional epoxy resin increasing the functionality means that will lead to have a, have higher cross link density now if you look into this molecule this this, uh, this is diamino diphenyl methane this diamino diphenyl methane was reacted with one mole of diamino diphenyl methane was reacted with four mole of epichlorohydrine having this nitrogen as trifunctional nitrogen is trifunctional so uh, it combines with this nitrogen combines with this uh, aromatic moiety and this is epoxy groups so four epoxy groups are combined to this molecule so when this is polymerized that leads to huge cross link density and it contains this CH2 linkage, CH linkage all these things as well as here CH2 linkage and aromatic linkage and oxygen these are terms. So, this gives a combination of very strong and tough as well as thermally stable composite. So, this is a, this can be a good characteristic of multifunctional epoxy resin and this TGDMA is formed from the reaction of methylene dianiline you can say this as methylene dianiline or diamino diphenyl methane with epichlorohydrin. As I told this resin is preferred for high temperature aerospace application. So, you can say this kind of multifunctional epoxy resins are used for high performance applications in aerospace industries um, in aircraft uh, for aircraft application. Now, let us look into the phenolic resin. You are discussing about the epoxy resins, epoxy resin, novolac phenol formulate combination. Now, let us look into phenolic resin. What is this phenolic resin? Now, this phenolic resin is a age old resin. Actually, this phenolic resin uh, found the commercial scenario um, when Dr. Bickeland he uh, discovered this bakelite he developed this bakelite that was the first uh, thermoset resin and first composites of bakelite co uh, phenol formulate composites developed by Dr. Bickeland and from his name this uh, bakelite uh, was given to this kind of product. Till date there is continuous research going on with this phenol and formaldehyde condensation product.
what is the reason behind this? This is a very good matrix region till today unbeatable uh, uh, system one can say. Now, this phenol the formula of phenol is this it has got three functional sites two ortho and one para is a reactive. Now, when it reacts with formaldehyde basically formaldehyde is retained in this form A C H O we can formaldehyde this formaldehyde available in the form of formalin it gives basically methylene glycol formaldehyde with water it forms methylene glycol this methylene glycol reacts with phenol that means formaldehyde reacts with phenol in the form of methylene glycol forming this kind of product this is known as trimethylol phenol you see this trimethylol phenol it has got three functional reactive functional groups when this trimethylol phenol further reacts with this phenol uh, unformaldehyde say gradually this chain increases chain length increases go on increasing CH2 uh, it can link up with another phenol unit this way it continues. Now, this chemistry is a complicated chemistry dealing with three different reactive functional sites. Now, one thing here it can be explained that uh, while phenol formaldehyde these are present whether it will grow in this direction or in this direction because these also reactive this can also react with another phenol which can also react with another phenol. So, in all the these directions this direction this direction this direction it can react ultimately it can grow and it can form a product high viscous as well as gel like three dimensional network product. But in order to make uh, in order to have this uh, suitable fabrication and processing um, facilities uh, uh, it should not uh, gel or cross link during the uh, before the final fabrication final shaping. For that reason it must be controlled the reaction must be controlled. Now, there are two different catalysts here you see there are two different catalysts. There is one acid catalyst H plus and the other is OH minus alkali catalyst. So, phenol and formaldehyde can condense in acid catalyzed medium as well as in base catalyzed medium. When 
it reacts in presence of acid catalyst, the ratio of the phenol to formaldehyde is different than that of the base catalyzed reaction. Here in case of acid catalyst reaction, ratio of phenol to formaldehyde is 1 is to less than 1 mole of formaldehyde. Now, this formaldehyde can be considered as a condensing agent as well as a cross linker for this kind of resin system. Here, if this the quantity of this formaldehyde is kept less say 1 mole react with less than 1 mole of this formaldehyde, the resin formed that will be in the available in the form of linear molecule which will uh, remain as thermoplastic and that grade is known as Novolac, Novolac resin. Now, this Novolac resin will not cross link itself to make it cross linkable or to cross link this Novolac resin another cross linking agent known as hexamethylene tetramine its formula is little uh, complicated here hexamethylene tetramine known as hexa technically this hexa uh, decomposes to form amine and formaldehyde this amine and formaldehyde basically becomes the reactive cross linking agent with this Novolac resin to form a third dimensional network. In case of bakelite switch boards, uh, switches, sockets etcetera or electrical uh, that insulators, in those cases this Novolac resin was used mixed with wood floor along with hexa and after compression during compression molding under heat and pressure that converts this Novolac resin to a thermoset bakelite resin uh, for phenol PF for phenol formaldehyde resin product. Now, in case of resol, here this formaldehyde in the form of formalin, formalin basically solution of formaldehyde say 40 percent sorry 37 percent solution of formaldehyde in water. When it remains soluble in water that is represented as methylene glycol as I told just few minutes back this CH2O is this methylene glycol. This is formed from formaldehyde and water. So, this is a water based system, water based system. This water based system in presence of alkali can form racial resin when the ratio of formaldehyde or amount of formaldehyde is more than 1 mole of this phenol. Here you see, if you compare these two different structures, here the, the para position, para position, some uh, growth is there. Para position, some reactive group is here. Whereas in this case, this para position remains free, which will be used up during cross linking. But here, these are also formed by virtue of the higher amount of formaldehyde over here, and this remains. Uh, this resin remains liquid uh, water based resin a liquid resin. In this case during the condensation reaction uh, this also uh, uh, this proceeds in water medium, but after certain growth of a certain molecular weight uh, this separates it to a different phase organic phase um, and there will be separation of uh, water and organic phase in the organic phase this resin will be there in the water phase other things will remain and this organic phase will be taken out and on uh, uh, cooling it becomes a brittle solid and these reactions are carried out at around uh, uh, 80 to 90 degree Celsius temperature for more than one hour time. So, this is a little uh, uh, in brief the chemistry of this phenolic resin which is a good thermoset matrix resin for making composites. Now, again another kind of um, condensation uh, polymer is polyimide. Now, polyimides are high performance resins uh, one can say engineering polymers engineering thermoplastics. And that can lead to high performance composites. Now, these polyimides are made from 
di anhydrides di anhydrides say typical example is this is known as uh, pyromelitic dihydride this is the this is one anhydride this is another anhydride so, this is called dianhydride. Anhydride means it is in dry condition, it form this anhydride, um, anhydride ring in contact with moisture or water, this anhydride ring will open up forming carboxyl groups. That means, you can say this can be tetracarboxylic acid basically it is a tetrafunctional compound in this formula this ar here is this phenyl ring so basically this compound and this compound are same this compound and this compound are same. So, one can take dianhydride or diester acid that means here aromatic ring is there. So, one uh, carboxyl group here in this case can be in the form of two carboxyl group in the form of ester group say in place of H if we write R some alkyl group this is an ester and these two acid groups. So, these two are the precursor these two are the uh, starting raw material starting uh, material for making polyimide. Now, this such type of compounds react high, uh, high, uh, highly with this diamine. Now, this diamine for this high performance resin high performance resin basically they are aromatic diamine that means there can be some aromatic ring one or more than one aromatic ring. So, this is phenylene diamine or one can have diamino diphenyl methane this kind of diamine. So, this dianhydride or diester acid reacts with diamine in aprotic solvent like say nit uh, N methyl pyrolidone, dimethyl formamide or dimethyl acidamide. So, these compounds are dissolved in this solvent and heated. On heating, what happens? This amino group react with this acid group, these acid, these acid groups or this anhydride group forming this uh, 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 opening the anhydride ring reacts with this amine group forming amide linkage C O N H N H. So, this is known as polyamic acid. Now, this polyamic acid it is further reactive, it is further reactive having this N H functional group this NH functional group can react with this carboxyl group, this carboxyl group can form to form a ring when it is heated at high temperature gradually it is heated from say ambient to or say 150 degree Celsius to 300 degree Celsius temperature um, in um, uh, dry condition, dry condition it forms a ring this is called imide ring here you see this uh, 
amide linkage is converted to imide link by reacting with this carboxyl group this imide ring. So, basically it forms a double strand polymer or multi strand polymer or ladder polymer which looks like this ladder like structure. How? See if we write the formula it continues this way like this, this side also. So, you see this basically the backbone of this polymer molecule is rigid having this ring configuration imide ring, phenyl ring, imide ring, phenyl ring, imide ring, phenyl ring. So, we can consider this molecule like this So, this line resembles this dotted line, this line resembles this uh, this line resembles this dotted line and these linkages are the steps of the ladder known as double strand or you can say multi strand polymer. So, this is highly thermally stable or thermostable polymer and once this structure is formed it becomes insoluble and infusible. So, these polymers can be a high performance polymers and in high temperature applications in aerospace applications in aircraft applications or in um, the spacecrafts, these polymers are used for making composites with again high performance strong fibers say carbon fibers or aramid fibers. So, this polymer is known as polyimide, polyimide and this polyimide uh, is formed out of condensation of dianhydrides and diamines. <coughs> Now, one thing I should mention at this point of time. Now, in this polyamic acid stage, it is soluble in solvent. So, the product is to be fabricated. Say, if somebody wants to make composite, the composite composite is to be fabricated at this polyamic acid stage, which remains uh, in a solution in a solvent. So, this solvent of polymeric acid should be used for soaking a fabric, then that polyamic acid soaked fabric or ply or layer can be heated at elevated temperatures from say 100 to through 150 uh, in step wise the temperature is to be increased, then up to at 300 degree it completes the immunization. This ring imide ring formation uh, uh, becomes complete. Once this imide ring uh, is formation is complete, it becomes insoluble and infusible. Although initially, so at this point of time I should mention that although initially uh, at the till the polyamic acid stage this polymer remains thermoplastic, but once this imide ring is formed it becomes thermoset and by that time it has already been uh, covered uh, this polymer has already covered the uh, you know, fiber in the in the composite. So, that and also it gives a very good bonding with the fiber this matrix regime gives a very good interface bonding with the fiber surface. So, if a high aspect ratio fiber is used 
uh, as the reinforcement and this polyamide is used as the matrix resin, one can obtain a very high performance thermal stable and strong composite. There can be other category of polyamides known as addition polyamide. Addition polyamide in the sense as you have seen in the previous case that imide means that must have, have imide linkage like this. Okay. Now, that the property the of flexibility, mechanical properties, shock absorption, toughness all these things can be controlled uh, or tailored if we tailor this part of the polyamide resin. Here you can have one rigid phenyl ring or you can have a flexible linkage like in this structure you see here CO group is there or one can have some ether linkage in place of CO one can have ether only oxygen over here. Now, this particular polyamide was made from diamino diphenyl methane and benzophenone tetracarboxylic dianhydride. Say diamino diphenyl amine DA, uh, DADPA or DADPM, which one is convenient, you can say diamino diphenyl. Uh, sorry, methane. Nah, sorry, it will be DADPM, diamino diphenyl methane, DADPM, DADPM plus BTDA. BTDA is benzophenone, benzophenone tetracarboxylic dianhydride. This DADPM and benzophenone tetracarboxylic dianhydride, this is the benzophenone tetracarboxylic, this tetracarboxylic means uh, it originated from one carboxyl group, it originated from another carboxyl group, another carboxyl group, another carboxyl group. So, four carboxyl group. So, this is benzophenone tetracarboxylic dianhydride that was reacted with diamino diphenyl methane. So, this amino group. Uh, this nitrogen is from amino group and that amino group reacted with this anhydride group forming imide linkage. So, here you see methyl linkage is there, CO linkage is there that imparts some flexibility to this polyamide. This is also a polyamide and this is also another polyamide, but their properties are different. Properties of this polyamide is different from the properties of this polyamide. Apart from this flexibility, this polymer can be further kept in the reactive form known as addition polyamide. You see the end groups are reactive groups that is actually uh, formed from the bismalimide uh, moiety, bismalimide moiety. Having this double bond over here, this system becomes reactive. Look into this here, this API addition polyamide is a reactive system and that is curable or cross linkable. So, that cross linking or curing of that addition polyamide occurs via this reaction. So, this curing of the addition polyamide occurs at elevated temperature say around 275 degree Celsius by the combined addition reaction of the malimide n group. This is the malimide n group Mali, malic imide. Malimide means malic anhydride. This is the malic anhydride imide. Malic anhydride when reacted with amine it forms malimide this malimide. This malimide uh, n group is there in the polymer. Okay. So, this uh, malimide uh, uh, combined by the addition reaction of uh, the malimide n group and the cyclopentadienyl group which was generated by reverse diels alder reaction from this n group of this polymer. Once again I am going back to this thing sorry, uh, this n group these, these are the n groups, these n groups actually these n groups breaks 
into malimide and cyclo di penta uh, di, uh, cyclopenta dienyl group. Now, these two groups once it is formed from the end groups of that addition polyimide that help in undergoing cross linking reaction in this form. This is the rest part of the rest, rest part of the polymer chain rest part of the polymer chain. So, uh, this is one direction of the polymer chain and this is another direction of the polymer chain which can be linked up to it on another uh, polymer molecule. So, it forms a cross linked configuration. So, that is generated by a reverse Diels Alder reaction. So, these two are formed by reverse Diels Alder reaction when they combine to form this kind of thing that is known as the Diels Alder reaction uh, this is in this direction it is called reverse Diels Alder reaction. Other uh, examples of other addition polyamides are <coughs> again this can be a benzophenol tetra carboxylic dianhydride type of molecule or compound having it is not anhydride, but it is a derivative of that anhydride. These are the est two ester groups diesters and diacid having a molecule having two diester and diacid. So, all of them can react with diamine aromatic diamine or aliphatic diamine in presence of this molecule having this cyclopentadienyl group ok or it, it actually basically the, this is ethylidine norbornin type of structure. So, uh, having this carboxyl and ester group that forms this kind of polyamic acid again this is polyamic acid this polyamic acid having this group then this polyamic acid will lead to imide ring, imide ring formation, imide ring formation ok. Here also one group is missing over here. So, now that can also form the imide ring it is missing here on uh, this MI, uh, similar carboxyl group can be uh, will be there in, in this at this position. So, this will form one imide ring this will form another imide ring and this reactive end groups are there as before it will be cross linkable as well as polyimide structure will be formed and at the same time this flexible linkage is there. So, toughness, stiffness, strength, thermal stability all these things are tailored in the form of thermoplastic or thermoset configurations to have a broad spectrum properties of this kind of matrix resin for high performance for making high performance composites. Now, the previous two cases formation of polyimides that involves organic solvents those are basically um, high profile one can say high boiling solvents having very strong solvation power ordinary solvents cannot dissolve such polyamic acids, but involving solvents for making composites that is not a good approach from the point of view of this um, environmental pollution. So, if a process of composite preparation is uh, without using any solvent or solvent less, then that is most acceptable in industry. So, people tried with without using any solvent that means, they took the reactant and on heating if those reactants can melt and if such chemical reactions can occur in melt condition that is highly welcome. So, there is solvent less aromatic uh, polyimide addition polyimide uh, polyimides without using any solvent they are known as melt processable. So, here you see as before these are the carboxylic or anhydride 
or uh, multifunctional aromatic acids you can say these are the amines acids and amines having ether linkages having phenyl link, uh, rings and again another system having acetylene group at the ends acetylene and amine group this amine group can react with this carboxyl groups or ester groups and acetylene groups remains at the end. So, inside the molecule there can be imide linkage, there can be ether linkage, there are phenyl rings. So, that contributes to the rigidity, thermal stability, flexibility, uh, toughness all those will be tailored by the presence of such of uh, groups and moieties whereas, at the end group there are acetylene groups are present which will help in curing of the resin. So, ultimately from thermoset system it can lead to a thermoplastic system it can lead to a thermoset system although uh, having such uh, um, uh, uh, phenyl ring and uh, ether linkage flexible as well as rigid system inside. So, that will leading to uh, 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 the thermal stability of the polymers. This malleimide, malic anhydride imide, malleimide regions. Now, this is a diamine again here x means x can be either methylene, can be sulfone, can be ether that means, if there is CH 2 it will be diamine or diphenyl methane, if there is SO 2 in place of x that will be diamine, diamine or diphenyl sulfone, if there is oxygen that can be diamine or diphenyl ether, if there is such groups uh, then uh, it will be again a different diamine. So, all those possibilities are there in diamine part of the reactants then take the malic anhydride, this is malic anhydride, this malic anhydride in dry condition that can react with this amine group in melt uh, condensation reaction forming this polyimide okay. and having these imide your, your um, uh, malic imide group at the as the end groups the which are reactive. So, inside inside there can be this phenyl ring flexible units, imide linkage all these things, but at the end groups there will be some reactive. So, ultimately that uh, compound uh, that polymer can be curable also. So, these bismalimides are uh, addition polyimides developed due to good drape and tack and the epoxy like cure conditions due to the presence of this malimide groups that they are able to offer in realizing better high temperature performance say service performance can be between 175 to 230 degree Celsius versus epoxy resin which perform little uh, lower uh, at the little lower range 120 to 175. So, so, if somebody wants to use a composite beyond 170 degree 175 degree Celsius temperature, so that epoxy composite will not be suitable in, the, in that case one has to use this type of bismalimide uh, resin uh, composite or polyimide or the other uh, addition polyimide composites which can stand beyond 175 degree Celsius temperature for a prolonged exposure. Other examples cyanide esters are also cyanide esters forming this ocean groups, ocean groups cyanide esters can be formed uh, the formula is like this and polyaryl ethers, polyaryl ether or uh, polyaryl ether sulfone you see this is uh, diamino uh, this is actually sulfonyl diphenyl uh, sulfone uh, sulfonyl chloride. Uh, I have some doubt about the nomenclature of this polymer. So, this is reactive chlorine groups are there, the sulfone group and this sodium salt of 
bisphenol A in dimethyl sulfoxide solvent if these reactants are heated. So, this kind of polyether this kind of polyether sulfone are formed again this is a very good high performance high uh, temperature resistant polymer or one can say again this is a multi strand polymer or ladder type polymer providing high thermal stability as well as strength. Polyaryl ethers, polyaryl ethers this is actually uh, aromatic groups, ether group, ketone group, ketone group. So, the name of this polymer is polyether ketone ketone, polyether ketone ketone. Thermoplastic polyamide imide. Now, we were discussing about the polyimides. Now, in one polymer backbone, one can have both imide as well as amide linkage that is known as polyamide imide that gives a combination of properties of polyamides say nylons with the polyimides. Okay. So, this polyamide polyimide characteristics are developed in this polymer by reacting suitable uh, monomers or reagents to form this polyamide imide linkage. This is the imide linkage, this is the amide linkage. So, in the polymer backbone if these two imide and amide linkages are there that is known as polyamide imide this is a torlon the trade name of this polymer is torlon. There are liquid crystal polymers in other lectures I have already developed the liquid crystalline polymers discuss the liquid crystalline polymers which are having uh, ordered uh, structures these are actually mesophagic polymers that means in the liquid state these polymers show crystalline or a liquid state means in solution or in melt condition they shows anisotropic behavior. So, this anisotropic behavior in liquid phase is uh, known as liquid crystalline phase. So, this liquid crystalline phase that occurs due to rigid rod like configuration structures of the molecules when uh, such units are uh, present in that polymer those units are known as mesogens. If those mesogens are uh, present then that gives long range order in the liquid phase. So, in a polymer so this kind of biphenol this kind of this kind of biphenol if that is reacted with say hydroxybenzoic acid again uh, that is also reacted with uh, that is terephthalic acid. So, terephthalic acid, hydroxybenzoic acid, biphenyl moiety all these are linked in one molecule and due to the presence of this phenyl ring, ester linkage etcetera that forms a long range or a rigid rod, rod like configuration and that is known as molecularly ordered liquid crystal polymers used as matrix resin for making high performance strong composites this is a zyder polymer, this is a vector polymer here this terephthalic acid, hydroxybenzoic acid and hydroxy naphthoic acid uh, these are there. Now, here you see uh, the melting temperature or glass transition temperatures are varied from one polymer to the other polymer by selecting a suitable um, architectural unit this is known as one can say this is known as um, uh, crankshaft unit where you see um, by uh, because of this kind of linkage it decreases the melting temperature from this polymer. These are different types of liquid crystalline polymers. Now, let us look into the till now we have discussed at length the different types of matrix resins polymers as the matrix continuous phase for making composites in both 
the thermoset and thermoplastic category <coughs> that is one component of the composite and the other component of the composite is fiber which is most important and these fibers uh, what would be the characteristic of the fiber the fiber must have high aspect ratio means the uh, aspect ratio is the ratio of the length of the fiber to diameter that means thinner the fiber higher would be the aspect ratio that means higher would be the surface area of the fiber and that will provide more interface area between the matrix and the fiber and that can lead to a very strong composite. So, that is why if the aspect ratio is very high and that will give uh, very strong composites as they satisfy the desired conditions and transfer strength to the matrix constituents. So, the strength transfer of strength is transfer of load that will be uh, maximum or that will be higher if the aspect ratio is very high if the interface area is very high and that influence and enhance the properties of the composite as is planned or as is desired for one particular uh, grade of product. The performance of a fiber composite is just by its length, shape, orientation, composition of the fibers and mechanical properties of the matrix resin. Composites may be fabricated with either continuous and short fibers. As you have seen a composite may be made from particles, particles today is the era of nanomaterials. If the reinforcement is of nano dimension, the composite we get is known as nano composite. For example, <coughs> In the last lecture, I referred the example of automobile tire where carbon black was the fiber was the filler <coughs> reinfor reinforcing filler. <coughs> The diameter of this carbon particle, carbon filler particles were around say for example, 30 nanometer, but the problem is with this 30 nanometer carbon black even if the um, particle size is of 30 nanometer diameter, but they form by virtue of their high surface area and since these are incorporated in a high viscosity uh, polymer like rubber. Uh, so, these uh, carbon particles form aggregates or agglomerates aggregate. So, in the rubber matrix these carbon uh, black fillers are no longer nano filler that way because they form the aggregates until and unless they are dispersed or broken to such dimension that cannot be a nano filler. Anyway, uh, by virtue of their chemical and physical characteristics carbon fillers uh, reinforce the uh, uh, carbon black fillers reinforce the properties of the rubber composite that is why we get that uh, very good strength performance of the uh, tire. <coughs> now, in place of carbon filler if somebody uses some other kind of nano filler like say um, malt MMT clay, malt morillonite clay modified with organic compound known as organically modified clay.
having <coughs> layer structures actually this is sodium MMTs sodium mold molnonite clay <coughs> having layer structures in nanometer dimension. <coughs> such clays are such clay fillers MMT clays known as this organically modified clay known as cloizite 1 grade is say suppose 30 B organically modified clay only a 5 part of such clay in <coughs> say rubber can provide huge strength property. Because if somebody calculates the surface area of this cloisite 30 B would be as high as the surface area provided by 40 to 45 parts of carbon black um, used in 100 part of rubber. So, 100 part of rubber with 5 part of clay can reach the mechanical properties of this <coughs> say tensile strength um, by using 45 parts of carbon black. So, one can get nano composites using nano fillers say clay or um, other nanoparticles say metal nanoparticles if those are incorporated in a polymer matrix one can get very good strong composite because of high surface area of the nanoparticles. <coughs> so, uh, here the performance of a fiber composite is judged by its length, shape, orientation, composition of the fibers and mechanical properties of the matrix resin. So, if the surface area of the reinforcement is very high, the composite, the properties of the composite would be very high, strength properties would be very high. That could be, uh, it can give uh, very good synergism in properties, synergistic properties can be available. Now, let us look into the fibers different types of fibers which will be suitable for making such composites. So, organic and inorganic fibers are used to reinforce composite materials. Almost all organic fibers have low density, good flexibility and elasticity. Inorganic fibers are of high modulus high thermal stability and possess greater rigidity, rigidity than organic fibers. And one can have diverse advantages of organic fibers which render the composites in which they are used. So, different types of fibers say glass fibers E glass, S glass, A glass, R glass already I mentioned. Silicon carbide fibers mostly one can say whiskers, silicon carbide whiskers which are actually um, single crystals of uh, single silicon carbide this, that can lead to high performance composites. High silica and quartz fibers, alumina fibers, metal fibers and wires, graphite fibers, boron fibers, aramid fibers. Aramid fibers are basically um, aromatic nylon having this para uh, linkage <coughs> this is the repeat unit of a aromatic nylon. <coughs> Aramid, aramid fiber it is a very strong fiber, strong aromatic nylon fiber for making high performance composite. Natural fibers, <coughs> now this is another area of natural fibers.
cotton jute rami sisal flax and so many these cotton uh, these natural fibers with natural matrix resin can lead to green composites these green composites are mean they are eco friendly fully biodegradable as well as uh, rigid and strong a full automobile automobile car body except engine automobile car body except engine can be made from this this uh, green composite after the life of the car then that car can be disposed and nature itself will take care of its disposal and management by degradation degrading it so it will not uh, it will not um, evolve any pollution to the environment so this green green composites can be made from natural fibers out of these natural fibers <coughs> this rami sisal flax and jute they have shown a good promise for such composites Now, for such green composites, this natural resin, natural matrix resin could be polylactic acid PLA or one can take soya resin from soybean soy seeds there are commercial soy resins available in the name spc soy protein concentrate or soy protein isolate these are basically proteins protein molecules having peptide linkage vegetable protein they are used as matrix resin which are biodegradable and nat naturally occurring now this soy resin spc and spi along with the sisal or rami or flax have been found to yield very strong strong green composite which is rigid stiff tough but it is biodegradable the resin is hydrophilic so in if it is not exposed to humid atmosphere or if it is not uh, uh, kept immersed in water this resin can perform for longer period of time but ultimately when it is disposed it will degrade so this is the nature of the green composites Thank you.